Hello and welcome to our live stream at this hour. I'm Yeo Yang in Beijing. Actually, Chinese President Xi Jinping has committed to make Chinese vaccines a global public good. That is why today I'm coming here to the Beijing Institute of Biological Products of Sinopharm. This is a major production base of Chinese vaccines. And today we are going to explore the working places here and to see how Chinese vaccines are being made. And of course, my, co my colleague Daniel Khan will join us later, and he has paid a visit to a factory in Pakistan. But first, let me introduce Mr. Zhang Jing, and he's the Assistant General Manager of this base. Zhang Jing, welcome. 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 So when the virus uh, start to encounter with the cell, we will see what happened here. So this is the recovery of the cells. At the beginning stage, we have the cell factory. And for all of these cells, we'll have an expansion in this stage. So we will expand the cells in this area. So for the cells are placed in different layers. Wow, so what are these stuff they're doing? No, I, at I believe they're observing some of the statistics, right? They are looking at the cell factory. They are trying to collect some information. I can't wait to see that. I see a robotic arm there. So what is he doing right now? In this area, it is the room for the cell nurture, and the temperature is 37 Celsius degree. So here we have 40 layer of the cell factory. We want to improve the effectiveness and the production. You could see we have these robotic arms to monitor and to operate all of these processes. So we could have these robotic arms to extract about uh, 40 layers of the cell. So this will improve the effectiveness and save some of the labor forces. And this will also be more safer if we use the robotic arms. And this could also improve the quality of the cells. So for the cells, they are staying in this room. The temperature is about 37 Celsius degree. If we leave this room, and it's quite difficult to process all of the cells. That's why we use the robotic arms for the operation. And we have to make sure that the cells can grow in this circumstance. So you mentioned that in this area, the temperature is about 37 Celsius degree. It is similar to a human body's temperature. So in this place, it will help to accelerate the cells. So under the temperature of 37 centigrade, like our human body's temperature. And the situation it grow, it is about 37 Celsius degree. If the temperature is too high or too low, and this will have some impact of the quality of the cell. And also, it may distort the shape of the cells. Because at this stage, we have to provide very good condition for the cells. If the cells is not properly processed, it will actually have an impact of the quality of our vaccines and our products. So only by having a good shape of the cells, and then it would be helpful to combat the virus, and then we will have a very good and effective vaccine. Actually, for the virus, it will duplicate inside of the cell. If the cell is of good quality, it is more like a soil. If we have a good soil, and then it will produce good quality of the crops. If the soil is alkaline soil, and then the crops will be damaged. This is quite a good metaphor. It's just like the cell is compared to the soil and the, our products is compared to the crops. 
So what is this one? This is another cell factory. We will help to expedite the cell reproduction. And also we will put some of the process cell into the reactor. And for this reactor, it will help to further expand the number of cells. So during this process, we are actually providing better environment for the cells. We are having this automated operation system, and we will also provide oxygen and the nitrogen and the compressed air. So it will help to maintain the rotation of the machine. And it keep updating some of the procedures to better nurture the cells. So for in the cell factory, we are seeing we already have a very good environment. Why we have to move all of these process cells into this reactor? So in this reactor, we have different kinds of carriers. And it will also help to expedite the reproduction of the cells. After cells are coming into this area, it will have faster reproduction. So it's just a step-by-step -step procedure. We're changing the cells from a smaller room to a larger room. So in this cell factory, after we process the cell, and then we will transfer all of the cells to another processing room. Production is going to be transformed into the reactors underground. So for all of these operations, we will have um, the pipes to transfer the cells, and it's completely automatic. Actually, we have a ground center to monitor all of these procedures. So we don't need so many people stay on site to process all of the cells. When we are producing the vaccines, uh, actually you could see the whole procedure is automatic and quite intelligent. As you could see, we have robotic arms, and in the past we only have like human to do it. We could only allow the young boys to lift all of those products because it is quite heavy. It is about like 20 kilogram per unit. It's quite heavy. So in the past, it's very difficult for us to process all of those cells. But right now, we have the robotic arms. It is more effective. So when we built this cell factory, we installed this robotic arm for the operation. And also, I want to understand the assistance from the CMBG to overseas countries. I believe we provide the support to 119 countries. And also, actually, we cover 196 regions and countries in terms of our support of the vaccines. Can you tell us more about it? What impressed you the most? So actually, we are providing uh, the vaccines to the Southeast countries and some African countries. As you know, um, on a global scale, the vaccine is short of supply. At this stage, if we are able to provide vaccines to those countries, uh, it is quite essential for all of these countries to contain the epidemic. So many countries, they really welcome this support. And many ministers and high-level leaders would like to meet us and greet us at the airport when they receive the vaccines, because we do want the vaccine to become the global public good. And we want to make our Chinese contribution to the world. So as the manufacturer, CMBG is very honored to produce the vaccines, and we are proud to provide all of these vaccines to different parts of the world. Gotcha. Well, actually, as we heard what John has said, well, actually, Sinopharm has provided vaccine aid to several countries and regions and international organizations around the world. 
But actually, besides vaccine, we know during this process, the transportation and storage processes is also very important. And earlier, we got a chance to talk with Mr. Yu Qingming, who is the chairman of the Sinopharm Holdings, and he shared with us the stories behind this transportation and storage process. Sinopharm has been part of China's overseas vaccine aid. For example, last year, China provided vaccine aid to Myanmar, the first vaccine aid transportation through land pools. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, last year, Sinopharm actively implemented the commitment by Chinese President Xi Jinping, which is to make vaccines a global public good. In 2021, we provided vaccination aid to many countries, including Myanmar and Laos. Our vaccines have been largely welcomed by people in these countries. As you know, many of the foreign leaders have also received the vaccines made by Sinopharm. At the same time, Sinopharm has a strong supportive chain for vaccine aid. For example, in the storage of the vaccines, as well as the transportation of the doses, we all have our technological support that guarantees that our vaccines can be successfully transported to overseas. What suggestions do you plan to submit at these two sessions? This year, with the country paying more and more attention to livelihood projects, my suggestion will revolve around the development of biomedicine, medical devices and health care. To be more specific, the research and manufacture of medical devices in our country. I think we need to pay more attention to the manufacture of some key components and parts of medical devices, especially in solving the difficulties encountered in the production process, and to improve the core competitiveness of our entire domestic medical device industry. And during last this political season, you called for development of the national health sector chain and the Internet Plus Medical Care, has progress been made in these areas? We have made great progress in the elderly care industry in terms of smart medical device use. For example, we have made a kind of wearable device which could determine a user's blood pressure, blood oxygen level and heart rate in real time. That could help doctors better understand the health condition of elderly people. Meanwhile, we have also manufactured a smart toilet, which collects urine and fecal samples, as well as data on blood glucose and blood lipids. We believe these kinds of smart devices could significantly improve the quality of life of old people while bringing convenience to them. So I will show you some of the reactors for the cells and also the process to produce the vaccines. So for the cells actually um, it's at the fourth floor and right now we are coming to the third floor. So some of the pipes uh, will help to transfer some of the cells to the reactors on the third floor. So this is a static nurture of the cells. So in these reactors, we will provide oxygen, carbon dioxide, and uh, other compressed air. So the virus will grow in these areas after the nurturing for some of the um, virus liquids will be collected in other tanks. And also we have the uh, inactivated tanks and to further process the cells. And then we will send all of these uh, products and liquids to the QA area. So if the QA can verify that all of these cells have been inactivated, and then uh, we will come to the last stage. Actually, besides Sinopharm since the outbreak of the pandemic, many other Chinese companies have also put their efforts into the international cooperation in fighting against the COVID-19. Now, let's take a look at the general introduction of China's global vaccine assistance. Data released by China's foreign ministry says as of this February, China has provided more than 2.1 billion doses of vaccine to over 120 countries and international organizations. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization notes that as of this January, over 140 countries and regions have received over 1 billion vaccines through COVAX. Among those doses, Chinese-made vaccines accounts for nearly one-fifth. 
The World Health Organization says China is one of the most important vaccine suppliers for Latin American countries. As of February 4th, China accounted for more than half of the vaccines which have been injected in Chile and Ecuador. And besides these countries, China has also provided vaccines to Egypt, Palestine, Turkey, Tunisia, Bahrain, Pakistan, the United Arab Emirates, the Philippines, Myanmar, Laos, Indonesia, Thailand, and other countries. Yes, as we can see in the story, China has provided vaccines aid to over 120 countries and international organizations. Those include Pakistan. And talking to Pakistan, now let me bring in our reporter Daniel Khan in Islamabad. He has paid a visit to a vaccine production base in the Pakistani capital earlier. And Daniel, what do you have for us? Hi, Diana. Well, talking about uh, Sinopharm, I got both my jabs uh, by Sinopharm. I believe it was uh, the first vaccine that China donated to Pakistan, along with uh, Sinovac and CanSino. So there has been a great help from China to Pakistan, as Pakistan was not prepared for uh, this pandemic. Uh, uh, Pakistan's health care system is uh, not uh, uh, up to the mark, and uh, China has been offering help and assistance uh, since the beginning. I visited the National Institute of Health uh, to take a closer look at uh, the joint venture between uh, CanSino Bio and uh, the National Institute of Health, uh, where they're producing the vaccine uh, named uh, Park WAC. Uh, it's a single dose vaccine and China helped uh, Pakistan in uh, setting up uh, and upgrading the facility in form of equipment, technical assistance and training the local staff. Uh, so let's uh, go and take a look. Hello everyone, this is Daniel Khan from uh, Pakistan and I'm back with yet another story and today we are here at the National Institute of Health, the NIH and we have come here to show the cooperation uh, between uh, CanSino uh, Bio and uh, the National Institute of Health. Uh, they're producing a vaccine. Uh, it's called uh, ParkVac. So the production started uh, back in 2021. It's been one year and uh, we're at the facility. We're going to go inside and see how uh, the vaccine is being produced. I will be speaking to uh, the executive director as well as uh, the officials who are concerned with the production of uh, this vaccine. And uh, initially it was anticipated that around 1 million vaccines uh, will be produced in a month. So we're going to go and talk to them and find out uh, whether they're meeting the target or not. So now we're going to go inside the facility. We have to uh, change into the PPEs because it's a highly sterilized uh, facility and uh, we will have to wear all the gear and they're going to show us how they're filling the bottles, how they're mixing the concentrate and uh, how the vaccine is now eventually being packed. So far uh, there have been about 1.5 million uh, cases of uh, coronavirus in Pakistan. Uh, they've been reported uh, since the first case came in on February 2020. So it's been two years and over 30,000 people have lost their lives due to coronavirus. So this is the biological production division. Mosif is uh, getting ready, changing into the PPE, making sure that we don't take any sorts of uh, viruses or bacteria inside the facility. It's a little uncomfortable, I'm wearing a jacket over a jacket. place is uh, quite clean, they've kept it in a very hygienic way and not, of, not a lot of people that I can see. Filling activity is going on. What I would start definitely is the Pakistan China relations uh, which goes back is quite historical. 
and uh, based upon that model, there's been a lot of collaboration and support from the Chinese government and the people of China as far as uh, COVID response is concerned. Uh, one of the major aspects was uh, uh, that China was quite successful in the very initial period that they could develop uh, certain molecules uh, for, uh, to be tested. And uh, based upon that, the clinical trials, phase one and phase two, and animal studies being conducted in China after successful uh, studies, they wanted uh, uh, Pakistan to be part of the clinical trial out of so many other countries we joined hands together. So the officials here say that uh, the production is going on on uh, war footing because uh, the government has decided uh, to uh, start a mask uh, vaccination campaign from uh, the 7th of March 2022 and for that uh, the production is going on about uh, 16 hours in a day and uh, as you can see behind me the facility the, the workers are here, they're working on two shifts and uh, they're being filled, the wilds are being filled. So, uh, I want to say that 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 I want to say so this was Mr. Ali Hassan, he's the scientific officer here at uh, the facility and he told us that uh, there are about 20,000 vials are filled every single day and after that there is a long process that goes from uh, quality control check uh, to other departments and it is then packed and then it is uh, sent into uh, distribution uh, by the uh, under the control of the National Command and Operation Center. So we just come out of uh, uh, the facility where uh, the process of uh, filling and packing was going on. Uh, we couldn't uh, go too deep inside because of uh, all the protocols and we were not allowed uh, even though we were wearing our PPEs but they said that uh, it's a highly sterilized area so we will not be able to go inside of the filling area or the packing area. The uh, government of uh, Pakistan now start a uh, door-to-door -door campaign for COVID-19 vaccine. So uh, now we are uh, working uh, on war footed to produce as much as possible and we introduce Park Vac vaccine in this vaccination program. But as uh, far as the information I received from uh, the officials, they say that about uh, 20,000 uh, vials are uh, being uh, filled every single day and one vial has about 10 doses of vaccine. So that is about uh, 180,000 uh, doses every alternate day. So they are meeting their target of uh, producing about 3 million uh, doses a month, which was basically anticipated uh, before, uh, before it was started, before the production was started. It is basically a single dose vaccine, but the officials say that uh, if there is a need, they are going to be producing uh, a booster dose like all the other vaccines. So this is the facility. So the officials have told me that last year a team of experts from CanSinoBio arrived in Pakistan to this facility and uh, there was a sharing of uh, technology. China shared its technology of uh, uh, producing vaccines on a uh, mass scale and uh, now uh, the concentrate of the vaccine it comes from China, it is imported. They installed the machinery here to upgrade uh, the facility and the experts trained the local staff. Uh, at this point in time, after one year, there is uh, no Chinese presence here, but uh, they did train uh, the local staff and now they're producing uh, the vaccine here at NIH. So this brings me to the end of another video from uh, the federal capital Islamabad and uh, it has indeed been a learning experience uh, visiting inside uh, the facility of the National Institute of Health and I tried to show you as much as I could as much as uh, we were permitted to shoot because there are a lot of uh, 
protocols, the place is completely sterilized and uh, they want to keep it like that. Uh, but the production is huge, like the officials say, it is on a war footing and uh, they want to meet the deadline of 7th March when uh, Pakistan will go into a national immunization drive. So that's all. I'm Daniel Khan signing off. Goodbye. So Diana, this was a visit to the National Institute of Health and it's a highly sophisticated facility where all the top of the line and latest equipment has been installed uh, with the help of China. And officials say they are very grateful to CanSino, the government and especially uh, uh, to the people of China for all their help in the fight against uh, the pandemic. Back to you, Diana. Hi, Daniel. Yeah, so happy to see you here. See, right now I'm changing to another part. I'm going to the quality control area. And would you mind to take a look up here and together with us? Of course, of course, I, I'd love to. Great. Thank you, Mr. John. So let's get started. So, John, thank you. Now, we'll see you next time. We'll show you around the laboratory. So in this lab, we will test uh, some of the composition of the cells. So right now you could see the staff is doing their work. Okay, so then, and now we are taking our experiments. We are going to testing the aluminum hydroxide in the vaccines. It's a very important part in production of vaccines. So now you could see they are doing the testing. Yes, if you take a look up here, the researchers are trying to test in the aluminum hydroxide in the vaccine. And you see this very interesting thing here, that liquid is yellow right now, right? If it turns to orange, that means the aluminum hydroxide meets the standard. Oh, so you're saying that it's going to change color now? Indeed! That is how researchers tell whether the aluminum hydroxide meets the standard. Indeed, it's turning to the orange. That's very interesting. So, Mr. Zhang, so we want to do the test. Okay, let me ask So, Mr. Zhang, our colleague is asking, after this process, what happened next? So, for example, if we complete the test of the aluminum hydroxide or other steps. So we have other labs to do other kinds of tests of the vaccines. This is the HPLC lab. The lab is called HPLC room. Do you understand that? HPLC. <laughs> it's too professional. So this is the HPLC equipment. This will actually to test the purity of the vaccines. This room is going to testing the purity of the protein of the virus. Is that cool? Yeah, this is the next step. And you see that huge machine. It's going to testing the protein in the virus. So okay, can you show us how to do it? Okay. So after we complete the testing and some of the samples we have to store in this equipment, this is the specimen bottle. And then for the whole machine, it will run automatically. And then we will see some of the results from the computer. After the analysis, we understand the purity of the protein. 
Okay. Daniel, let me explain that to you. That's so interesting. And the researcher is going to put some samples about the virus into this machine. And this machine is totally automatically work. And after their analysis, they're going to put the protein analysis of the virus, send out the data on this kind of computer. And the computer will have the details of the virus protein. Why we want to test the composition of the protein of the virus? Because after we um, receive some of the cell liquid and then we have to do some extraction. So if the purity is not working well, meaning that the vaccine is not good enough, so the purity have to go above 90%. Daniel, let me explain that to you. This is so interesting because to make an inactivated vaccine, the researchers need to extra virus and they need to make sure the purity of the virus, only the purity of the virus hit over 99%. That means it could be used to make a vaccine. Oh, I see. I see. Wow, it's so, so interesting. So what's going on next? So that's indeed the last step. They're going to test the efficiency of the vaccines. This is very important for us to test the uh, effectiveness of the vaccines. Oh, not really. My colleagues thought we are doing a test on the animal, but that is not the case. So how we do this? You could see we are using all of the samples and the devices to test the effectiveness. So for example, we will add the antibodies and to see whether it works together with the cells. And also we will put some signaling samples and the labels. And we will observe the change of the color. And then we will going to check the effectiveness of the vaccines. And then we will come to the final result. So you're talking about the verification and the effectiveness of the vaccine. That is basically the same thing. to do any like test on the rabbits. So this is how we test the efficiency. when we are producing the vaccines. So, for example, any area that we require specific temperature, for example, the uh, storage, and uh, for some of the processing room, you're talking about the 37 Celsius degree. Then you mean is there a policy control section that opens all the process of the production area? Sort of or the 
So actually, Daniel is specifically referring to the storage condition for the vaccines. So when we are storing the vaccines, we are putting in a place with 28 Celsius degree. Centigrade, and um, both in transportation and storage. Thank you for that. How about what you see in Casino's factory? What their what their vaccines need? Uh, where I was at the uh, the plant site of my own at the National Institute of Health, but they said that they need I mean, a certain temperature, otherwise uh, the 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 vaccine goes bad. Uh, they were. Yes, of course. We have the plan. Can you tell us more about this? So, for the African countries and the southeastern countries, we do have further plans. If you have a need, just tell us. <laughs> well, Mr. John is telling me if you need vaccine, please let us know. <laughs> Daniel just said that he already received like two jabs of the Sino Farm, and also it is well received. So, as Mr. John introduced to us, and the Sino Farm still have plan to provide vaccine to the Africa and of course in the Europe, right? 
And so we're looking forward to that. I believe in the future, Chinese companies like Sinopharm will also provide more and more vaccines to the world. And like we, China, we are shouldering a kind of huge responsibility as a big country. And we are to try to fight the coronavirus, fight the pandemic together with the world. Right, Daniel? Absolutely, Diana. Uh, China has uh, indeed been a uh, great help to Pakistan since the beginning of uh, the uh, pandemic. Uh, I remember that uh, when uh, I was in uh, Pakistan uh, uh, last year in February 28, the first case was reported, and right after that, as soon as it arrived, uh, uh, there, were, there was news that China had, uh, uh, you know, uh, offered to help, and it started at, in the form of first. Uh, all those PPEs came in from China as donations, and then up to the point of the vaccine. Pakistan was one of the first countries to get the vaccines, and China, in fact, was the first country to come to Pakistan from China. So, indeed, uh, China has uh, spared uh, this operation to fight against the uh, coronavirus. Well, we're happy to hear that Pakistan is one of the first countries who has received the vaccine from China, right? Yes, absolutely. Of course, so we believe in the future, China will of course send more vaccines to the countries around the world and providing China's help to countries around the world and the shouldering of responsibility as a big country. So that's all for today and thank you so much Daniel, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the future and so happy to see your vlog in the casinos factory, it's really interesting. Thank you, I, I tried to show as much as the access I could get because they were quite strict about all the protocols and all the, you know, the, the gear that we had to wear. It was a completely sterilized area, so I tried to show as much as I could and I hope you liked it uh, from there. And I am also looking forward to uh, working in the future and uh, on such uh, projects. Of course, next, next time come to the Sun so Maybe next time if Daniel paid a visit to Beijing, maybe he's welcome to come to CMBG. So actually, he's a good friend of us. Well, Mr. John says he welcomes you next time to the company and to see the base. Thank you so much, Mr. John. Thank you. Okay, All thank right. you so much, Mr. John, and for accepting us and showing us your base here. And it's really lucky for us to see how the Chinese vaccine being made here. It's really lucky for us today. So goodbye, Daniel. Let me see you next time. Goodbye. 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 So of course our audience here, thank you so much for watching our live stream here. It's really an interesting experience to see the production base here in Sinopharm and of course the quality control area and we can see the strict process in how to make a So vaccine. once again, thank you very much for your introduction. And also we are able to understand how to produce the vaccines and the quality control process and we are understand we are support to overseas countries. And right now we are seeing we sell a lot of vaccines to other countries because we have very strong quality control of the vaccines. So have you ever seen, like, for example, any comments from other countries? Right now, we are able to uh, provide the vaccines to 119 countries and covering 196 regions and um, countries. We are doing a lot of export of the vaccines. So China have contributed our own efforts in combating COVID-19. China has put the efforts in containing well in combating the coronavirus pandemic and contributing to its efforts to the process of recovering of the world. So that's all for live streaming today and thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.